you can pre-order JR's new book right now. Yeah. We're going to go ahead and reveal the cover for JR's new book. This is the exclusive. The first time you're going to see it anywhere. It's a uh, grilling JR on youtube.com business is about to pick up. It's Jim Ross and Paul O'Brien back together again. And what a fantastic cover it is. And you see at the bottom, a quote from the rock on the cover that says Jim's masterful play-by-play -play commentary has always been driven by his passion, his deep wrestling knowledge, and most of all, his ability to make the audience feel the action of the wrestling match. Now the book won't hit stores until March 26th, but you can pre-order the book right now at jrbook50.com. This is an awesome holiday gift idea to let somebody know not only were you on the cutting edge and you got them something that they literally couldn't get for themselves, but they've got something to look forward to. It'll be just a few weeks after Sting's last match. And you can pre-order it right now at jrbook50.com. That's jrbook50.com. I can't believe that's real, man. 50 years in the wrestling business and the new book cover looks fantastic. How pumped are you to have this book released well, on it, wrestling it, fans? It's a hell of a read. It's fun, short, short chapters. Uh, you know, it's one of those books where you could theoretically put it in your bathroom. And when you visit the loo. You can, uh, read a chapter, all quick reads, uh, nothing long and wordy like I'm being right now. Uh, but I'm really pleased with it. Paul O'Brien's a genius, uh, truly a literary genius. He's great creatively. We, we, we communicate as good with any business associate that I've ever worked with. So, uh, I think between the two of us, we, we accomplished what we were, we were seeking out. And, uh, I, I hope folks give it a shot. A lot, a lot of stories, a lot of different talents featured. Uh, it's good stuff. Uh, th largely thanks to Paul O'Brien, my stories, his writing. I, I wrote some too, uh, obviously, but, uh, he's the, he's the genius of the family. And that comes to that. So, uh, yeah, check it out, you know, pre-order it. That's what I'd suggest. It'd be make everybody happy. And, uh, I, mean, I think that's a cool deal. So. But I like the cover. Don't you? I love the cover. I thought they did a great job with it. And, uh, how cool is it? You were able to get a little, uh, a little quote from the rock man. Um, among others, you know, John Cena wrote some beautiful stuff. Uh, Bret Hart. I mean, it's a who's who of who endorsed the book and more specifically to my own heart's sake, who endorsed me. Uh, I had great experiences with all those guys. Uh, Brian Gewertz wrote some cool stuff. So, uh, and he's another genius. So, uh, it's, uh, it's fun. It's, it's going to be fun. And I hope folks will just give it a shot. I'm going to be doing the audio book as well. I'm not sure when we're going to do that project, but I may do it right here in my, uh, in my little home bedroom office. <laughs> so anyway, but thanks for putting it on the screen. I appreciate it. And hope folks will react to the message a little bit. It'll be interesting to see how many people pre-order the book. Uh, I'm very curious as to that as the old marketer that I am, uh, I'm curious to see how that, how that message is uh, going to respond and hopefully, you know, uh, we'll get some social media out of it and, uh, get some tweets and some Facebook stuff. Uh, so people can be reminded, but jrbook50.com is where you pre-order it and, uh, let's get it going. Check it out. JRbook50.com. Jim, we've been uh, filibustering here for a bit, but our topic today is looking back 20 years to Armageddon 2003, the last pay-per-view on the docket for the WWE that year. And 2003 is not well remembered by many as being a hugely successful year creatively, but the business itself, as far as the dollars and cents, well, it's still riding high. And WWE announces at its investors call that they had the most profitable quarter in years and was on pace for the fifth best bottom line year of any pro wrestling company in history. But I think a lot of fans remember, you know, sort of post the WCW collapse and post the invasion angle. Uh, it's not the most fulfilling time to be a wrestling fan creatively. And I can't help but wonder how much of this profit is based on maybe not necessarily growing the business, but cost cutting. Cause I guess there's two ways to grow the bottom line. You can yep. 
grow the top line or cut some expenses. Were you guys as best you can remember in cost cutting mode in 2003? I think so. I think so. I think, uh, it seems like that trend or that feeling came and came and went and came and went. Uh, that's just, I think that's smart business. You know, when your business is challenged, uh, you have to look at, it's all about the bottom line. And so, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I remember tense times. I remember some layoffs and things of that nature, but it really is, wasn't unusual. It's because it was in our crazy genre of pro wrestling. Uh, you know, I don't know the cowboy Bill Watts ever talked about restructuring or Fritz or Eddie Graham. They, they depended on ticket sales as their one and only mainstream source of revenue. And, uh, you know, that was the thing that I think when, during this time, WWE was, was looking for new revenue streams and new businesses. And that concept has worked out real well for them. They've become more diversified. And, uh, so it was an interesting time, but you know, golly Conrad, how many times have we said that? What, when is pro wrestling, not an interesting time, either pro or con, right? There's never a dull moment in this crazy business. Let's talk about something that comes up on this investor call, the tape library, WWE had been quietly collecting a lot of these. Of course they bought out ECW and they bought out WCW and that meant they also got Jim Crockett promotions, but they also were able to land the AWA library. And this is years before the WWE network. And we know they're going to eventually launch a WWE 24 seven cable video on demand effort, mm. but we're still a couple of years away from that. But I remember talking to Bruce and he would say when he first went to work for Vince in the late eighties, Vince was talking about a WWE network. Now he couldn't have envisioned what it would become with apps and streaming and all that, but right. I do think he thought there would be a television channel, like a cable network that was just sort of 24 seven WWE. What did you think the plan was 20 years ago in 2003, when you guys are amassing these different libraries and cutting these deals, but you're not really doing anything with it yet. What did you think the vision was at the time? I think, uh, I, I remember Vince and I having various talks about this. Because I was deeply involved in the acquisition of some of these libraries. I remember vividly, uh, flying to Dallas and meeting with, uh, Mrs. Von Eric Doris. I believe that was her name. a uh, nice lady. And I, and I negotiated, uh, the purchase of the world-class library, for example. And there were others, you know, little, little smaller ones and stuff, uh, you know, uh, to, I think we acquired Cornette's library, uh, OVW or Smoky mountain. Sorry. A lot of, a lot of initials. Uh, so, uh, I was involved in from the start. The example that I remember was that if the weather channel can have a channel completely devoted to weather as crazy as it sounds, then why couldn't we have a channel? akin to the weather channel where we were, this is what we do. We have, it's, it's, an, it's, it's WWF 24 seven because the, the, we, we know the fans are passionate and sometimes obsessed. So, uh, uh, that was kind of where I saw it, you know, that would be a space at some point on basic cable where our channel would exist. And, uh, that was, I remember talking about that a lot. But the first thing we had to do is get the material to program whatever we were going to do. And uh, I know I remember talking to, uh, Gene Oakland's son, I think it was, his name was Todd, I believe, uh, about the AWA library. I think he was kind of the liaison for that broker, the sale, made himself a couple of bucks. Uh, so, uh, we, we had to get, we had to get material. We had to get enough to program the network and notwithstanding the, the library of that we had the WWWF library and so forth. So that was kind of the thought, but, but it changed from time to time, you know, different influencers would have another idea. Everybody wanted their idea to be accepted by Vince because it gave them the points they felt they required for happiness. 
and he don't work that way. And most of them that don't get to know him don't know that. So, uh, anyway, I, I thought it had a life. I thought it had a heartbeat. Now, did I foresee uh, what, what it's grown to? No, I didn't. I'm pleasantly surprised that it did, but it was a challenging thing to get off the ground. And uh, again, the first thing we had to do, if you're going to do a network, what are you going to program it with? And that's what we were working on getting content. Content is king. 